Hey people, Izzy's Army here, and today I wanted to talk about the ideal way to start the game on your second playthrough. So, most of you, if you've completed the game by now, you've probably sunk maybe, you know, 60 to 100 hours into the game, uh, and now you just want to mess around with a new class, uh, maybe just because you want to play through the game again with something totally different, or, or maybe you're into PvP or co-op. Um, so this is the guide for you. I wouldn't recommend this on your first playthrough. So what we're going to be doing is taking our character from level 9 to about level 35 and then having the option of taking a somber weapon up to plus 7. So we're not going to take it all the way to, to plus 10 and be busted um, and we're not going to be you know, super speed running here. Uh, this is just so you can do this casually on every playthrough that you start again when you want to start a new character. So we're not going to do any sort of skipping about. I'm going to try and keep this as unedited as possible just so you can follow this completely. Um, up to you whether you want to take this first fight or not. Just know that um, if you jump off the edge too soon then you'll have to do this again. Uh, so either just run into the enemy uh, and die, or, or fight him, or wait for him to spawn, then jump off the edge. Uh, entirely up to you, though. Um, but yeah, we just want to get ahead now into Limgrave. That is our, our goal here. We'll give him a few pokes. And then we'll die. Now what I also want to say as well is obviously keeping this in mind with this run is that, you know, this is a setup for a character that you're going to be using in the game, so we're not going to like skip easy uh, grace points because you know they're going to be coming useful when we want to come back to things. Um, so we're going to grab things just as we see them. Um, obviously, there's a few things that we need to do uh, as a priority, um, but other than that, it's going to be quite casual. Um, I think it's going to take us. Um, say about 45 minutes to an hour for this but considering the size of the game this is uh, it's not really a much of a, a commitment in time and this is going to get you set for the rest of what you want to do with the game um, one thing I will mention is if you want to follow Rodriguez questline um, then skipping straight out of Limgrave uh, can cause that to, to move on. You won't lose her, you'll still get access to Spirit Summoning, um, but you will yes. miss her quest line um, in Stormvale Castle. Okay, so let's just talk to this guy. So yeah, our first priority now is just uh, getting Torrent. We will stop in the church on the way though, just to get this checkpoint. And you can do this with any class, that's the kind of the beauty of it. Like I said, it is, there's not going to be anything hard or challenging in terms of doing like jumps or tricks to do this. Um, there's, there's one jump spot that is, is slightly tricky, um, but it should only take a few attempts. Um, also, this is going to be, you know, basically a pacifist run uh, because th th there's nothing that you need to kill uh, in order to progress this at all. Um, I'm going to be taking out a dragon which doesn't fight back uh, but that is it and that is just to get my character set up with whatever starting class that I want. Um, so obviously make sure you choose your, your weapon that you're going to be doing before this. See what the requirements are and I would suggest that you by the end of this try and meet the the minimum requirements um just so then you you can know i mean you'll have materials up to plus seven but how far you take that is entirely up to you you know you could um just put one or two levels in because you might want to co-op or do pvp but it's just giving you the option straight away um it's not about yeah, let's immediately get to plus 10 and wreck everything. It's just, just giving you the options to do things and the optimal route to do it in if you want to start your, your next playthrough uh, with as, as little aggravation as possible. I'll just skip through this dialogue. Have you heard of they, sir, but you and then we will get Torrent.
Use it. It will summon a torrent. Treat him with. Okay, we will use our gold seed flask. It's in um, again entirely up to you whether you pick up the gold seed. What I found is that although um, it was very handy on my first playthrough, um, that by the end of the game, I think I had a st I would say a stupid amount of spare gold seeds is what I would say. Um, now, again, because we are going to be playing through the game properly with this character, there's no need to skip the map. Um, just as, as well, just to kind of help yourself out uh, going forward with this character because you know at some point you are going to want to edit your weapons i would do this as well which is just grab the first whetstone it's this very quick and easy to do get our first uh, ash of war as well and then we just uh, summon torrent which i've put on my uh, my quick menu just for ease there's also two carriages here, some good early weapons. I think there's a flail and there's a greatsword. Then any items that you see that you want to pick up, feel free. Um, I am going to try and pick up a few golden runes on the way just to make things easier for me, just so I have more options at the end. Um, but yeah, like I said, there's no stress about it. Uh, there will be wolves that attack you on that path, and again, because we're going for <laughs> no no fighting apart from, uh, like I said, one dragon that doesn't attack back. Um, we'll just go around to the right here. Uh, in case you're confused about who Rodriga is, uh, she's the lady in this shack here, so she will automatically move on um, once you've gone past Stormvale, but you don't lose her, you just uh, lose a small amount of her quest. So again, we're going to light the grace because this will be useful for us later when we want to go back to Stormvale Castle. We'll also uh, add a charge to our flask. So by the end of this we should have um, quite a few flasks and we should also have a, uh, a couple of charges as well. Now, normally you'd be going into Stormvale Castle. We're just going to keep heading straight here. I'm not going to worry about doing any sort of fancy jumps or anything. We're just going to go over the bridge. And what we'll be doing here is we'll go in all the way to Lunaria. Uh, we will come back on ourselves as well because there's a few uh, other key items that we want to pick up as well. Um, just something that you need when you're doing your playthrough cookbook there. Again, you're not going to be coming down this path again, so why uh, why waste time just pick it up now? Okay, this is extremely dark. <laughs> Wish I had uh, passed the time now. We'll just uh, hug the wall, though. God. <laughs> the one thing I didn't think of before starting to record is this path being pitch black. <laughs> okay, so there you can see we're getting into Lunaria now. Uh, obviously, there is a trick you can do where you jump off to the right when you see the wolf that starts to howl at you, but we're not going to do that. We're going to take the easier path. We're just going to keep following this round uh, to the left when the time comes. Because that is going to get us a grace checkpoint, uh, which obviously is going to be useful for us again later. But it'll also get us our first sacred tier. So grab this. And, you know, I mean, jumping off the edge there is not saving you that much time. You know, we're just uh, taking our time, taking it easy. Uh, this guy here, if you get a spare key into Lunaria, uh, he'll take that off you and that'll complete his quest line. Uh, there's not a lot else to it. I'm just going to grab this here. I don't... I think this might be Grease. No, it's a scroll. Again, we'll grab it as we're on the way past. Then we just need to keep making our way into Lunaria here. 
There's an enemy encampment. Um, obviously, we haven't leveled up at all, so we're not going to deal with these guys. We'll grab another cookbook on the way through. And then we will go to the merchant right by here. Activate another grace point. I believe he sells you, which would be really handy for a magic build, is the recipe for um, the magic throwing knives. So, uh, yeah, really handy. We'll grab the next map fragment because, as I said, why not open up the map? Oh god, just as long as we don't die on the way. Make sure we heal our horse. There we go. Jeez Louise. And then what we're doing now is we're just looking for a bit of a shortcut into Lunaria, just so we don't have to cover the whole lake. So, as soon as you see the predefined ruins pop up, you know you're in the right place. So just avoid the enemies. And then the portal is here. This is going to take us to the front gate of the academy. So now we've activated the grace site. You just need to come this way, and it's totally up to you. You can go all the way back down the easier way, um, or if you want, you can do this jump off here. But... No biggie. It, like I said, nothing nothing too tricky in this. We're going to be uh, taking our time and taking it easy with this. Anything that you see that uh, <laughs> you take a fancy to on the way past, just grab it. <laughs> Why not? It's your game. We're not uh, we're down to speed run. We just want to really quickly establish our character. Now, the only thing to watch out for here is uh, the dragon. Uh, as he's guarding the key that we need. Because um, we will be warping back to Lunaria. Grab all the items. And then we will leg it. There's, um, there's a couple of things you can do with this as well. Um, so the guy that we fought, um, spoke to right at the very start of the game, what you can do is once you have access to all of this, um, like we do now, you can complete his quest line. Uh, you can go to Morgwin's Palace early, and then that is where you can actually get the, uh, the early plus 10 materials. Um, and you also get access to a very good um, farming spot for uh, for runes. We're just going to quickly uh, go through this as well. This is risky. Um, so just try and be quick. Watch your health. On your horse's health especially. But we're just going to grab a load of runes here. Just because the runes that I want to get, um, I want to keep for leveling up. So these are just help us with uh, purchasing the items that we need. So there we go. Nothing too stressful. I mean, <clears throat> we've got a nearby checkpoint, so if you die, you die. Right, so let's just keep cracking on. Uh, and we're nearly at uh, the next um, basically the next reference point we need here, which is really important. So we're going to try and unlock a grace site here that will um, give us a merchant that sells us all the way to plus four somber stones. Also going to grab a map fragment on the way. Okay, so what you want to do is you can run through these runes, it doesn't really matter, but you will aggro enemies that are a little bit annoying. I mean, even at low level, they're not going to do a lot to you because they just fire magic. So you can kind of just skip around them. Grab the grace point, and this is the guy that's going to sell us materials up to 1 to 4. Um, so now we need to go and get. Uh, materials 5, 6, and 7. Okay, so we've walked right back into the center of Lunaria to the uh, the gate entrance. 
had about a million notifications then on my map that this is the uh, the first time I was going into my map and that uh, we had a load of map fragments added as well. Okay, so now we are properly in the castle. You can still use your horse for this bit, which I would recommend just for a bit of speed because there's going to be another golden seed down here for us. Okay, so when we rest here, Melanie will show up again. To determine if you have it seems torrent, whereas I may there is, but I can take gathering. And this is just because we've now passed Stormvale Castle. And she's gonna take us to Round Table Hold, which is where we need to be to actually upgrade our weapons. Okay, so once you've got round table on your map, you can come back here anytime. Um, and here is the uh, the main blacksmith that we'll be using. And as I mentioned, Rodrika has automatically moved to Round Table Hole. Yeah, so this uh, this playthrough, I'm, I'm thinking to go in. Well, I have named myself Griffith because <laughs> uh, my uh, my Let's Play series uh, was uh, was gets all the way through. So yeah, I'm not too sure what weapon I'm going to use yet. Um, there's a nice. Obviously, this is a pretty decent weapon at the start here. Um, then there's the... I think you can get like a really high level rapier like from Roger as soon as you get into Stormvale Castle if you want a normal weapon. Um, and then maybe the Moonvale is quite fitting as well because I haven't had really a chance to use that yet. Um, let's just light this grace checkpoint here and probably die. No. Yeah, I'm not too. I haven't settled on a weapon yet, but I know I want to do Dex and Magic. So uh, now we just need to basically make it to the lift, um, because the lift is going to transport us way over to um, to Volcano Manor, and that is where we're going to get our um, plus five, six, and seven stones. Oh God, might be dead here. This is why we, we uh, use the grace points. Yeah, see, this is the uh, the one thing about using the the prisoner as a starting class. <laughs> it is very easily just to get absolutely squished on the way through here. Grab some magic grease, because why not? Just roll this guy out of the way. Just need to make sure now that we jump at the right time here, and the dogs don't kill us. Okay, good. <laughs> I was sweating then, thinking the dog was going to make it on here with us. Okay, now, again, just for uh, my own sake, this is optional, but I'm going to grab the Grace Checkpoint here. Because you've actually got two options when you go to Volcano Manor. So, you can either um, grab the materials and then just warp out of there. Or potentially you could fight the abductors. Because um, if you fight the abductors, uh, then you get a, a easier way basically, or a quicker way into Altus Plateau. We're going to follow a different route, because I just want to make sure that you've got access to uh, all the starting areas. Um, so you'll have basically the ability to choose a, a weapon from all four of the starting areas. Um, but yeah, so we just need to fall down here and get caught by the abductor now. Okay, so we're down here. Smith and Stone 5. So you don't want to get hit by the initial attack. You want to be grabbed. And because my uh, prisoner is so squishy, he'll do that in one hit. Okay, so now we're in Volcano Manor. 
So your option would normally be when you do get um, abducted would be to go down that path down there. Uh, and that would actually take you to the abductor boss fight. Although we're, we're basically too weak for that at the moment. Make sure you heal there as well, especially if you're a, a prisoner class like me. Because uh, that fall, then followed by the lava, will mess you up. So we're just going to grab this rune here. Not necessary, but I'll take the extra runes. Then we just need to run around the side. And we're going to grab the first one of our somber smithing stones, because we haven't actually picked any up yet. Then we're going to jump back off. And then we just need to leg it now for this elevator. Just got to be careful of where this guy is, though, because he can uh, mess this up for you. I uh, double chug there just in case. And I'm glad I did. So this will be our next Summer Smithing Stone. There you go, plus five. So we've got five, six, seven, and now we just need to get seven. Okay, now we just need to run up the stairs. Be careful of this guy though. He likes to delay his attack. And it can ruin you. Do not go into there because that is the boss room and we're not going to do any dodgy glitches or anything to, uh, to beat that boss at this stage in the game. We're just going to raise the bridge. Now this is the trickiest part of this run. So yeah, you may want to just put your equipment load to light for this, just to try and give yourself a bit, a bit of a easier time. But basically, you you want to jump on this little nubbin by here, and then jump up. It can be a bit finicky to get this first jump though. And then the second jump is all about the angle. There we go. Yeah, you need to really do that with confidence, otherwise you'll just get messed up. And then this second bit is also quite tricky, so you kind of need to run, I'd say, at an angle to get there. And hopefully not get murdered by that guy. Okay, <clears throat> now normally you'd have a grace checkpoint right by here, which would be so convenient. But because we haven't been to Volcano Manor yet, that door is locked. So we just need to leg it at this stage. Nothing to uh, deer in, just drop down another smith and stone 5, coming in handy for later I'm sure. And then we just need to do a jump here to the left, and then we can finally get the heck out of here. Oh god. Nini. And now we just need to leg out that item over there. <laughs> don't be, that's the one item that I would say, don't be tempted by it because it ain't nothing of any use. We're just going to run all the way down the stairs. And I believe, is it a right or a left we take here? It's a right. So as long as uh, you've activated this, don't worry about anything too scary. Ooh, just in time. I'm going to quickly increase the strength of my charge while we're here. And now we're going to walk right back to the beginning. Okay, so from here, there's just a little detour that we need to take before we go any further. And that is just over to this cliff here. So you'll know when you uh, you see it because you'll see these archways, and then we're just going to jump. And don't worry, it looks like you're miles away from it, but it still counts as you be in in the uh, the wind geyser. And we just want that uh, that golden pickle foot. So a spirit spring, that's what it's called. This is going to take us straight back up. 
I would say to warp out there, but unfortunately because of the enemies there, you can't do that. So now we are right back at the very beginning, but we now have access to all seven of uh, the slumbering smithing stones. But wait, now we want to make sure that we can actually use them and also get our character to a state um, where they can use whatever weapon that we want, basically. So now we're basically going to take a bit of a journey here to the east. Uh, we're just going to keep following this along. There we go. So there is where we met Melina. We could have warped and started from there. But we'll grab this grace point while we're here. And then we're going to go directly through this camp here. Because this will give you the very first cookbook, and you might as well grab that while you're here for crafting. Because that will actually let you um, make fire grease, which is very good early on. I'm going to grab this grace point here. Because if, for example, I wanted to do Euro's quest line uh, and get a very good katana and a very good blood arcane weapon and I'll be able to get that quite easily from there <laughs> that is an easy jump trust me I just uh, messed it up completely okay and then we're gonna basically head um, in this direction over here towards the mist woods uh, until we hear Kenneth and then as soon as you hear Kenneth, you know you're in the right place. So he's going to basically start shouting at us now as soon as we get by this big archway. Hello? Yeah, so there's Kenneth. There? As soon as you hear him, you know you're in the right place. Okay, go round this giant for sure. Okay, and then we're going to make it to the third church of America. Grab ourselves the wondrous flask of physics. There we go. And another sacred tear. Okay, so you could really stop with this if you really wanted to, um, because we've now got, what, six flasks. Um, we've got those flasks to plus two. We've got our wondrous flask of physic. Um, and we also have access, as I said, to uh, the first seven levels of a somber stone. So what we're going to do now is, because we want to do this completely as a pacifist, as I mentioned, we are going to now go south. This is going to get us another golden seed, another map piece. Uh, there's access to the underground there if you really wanted it. There is two more um, tiers for the wondrous flask of physic. And then we're just going to jump off here. We just want to keep heading south because, as I mentioned, we're not going to fight any bosses apart from the dragon that doesn't fight back. And we want to be able to get all the way to Altus Plateau. So the reason we've come south, uh, as well as picking up a few more goodies, is to uh, to get the first part of the De Dextus Lift Medallion. So we're just going to rush through this, try not to get killed by the Ballista. Right, 
Grab another golden seed. So that'll take us to uh, seven flasks. Now this guy gets out of the way. Oh god. Don't kill me please. This is why we activate Sights of Grace, because we're not speedrunning and we don't want to uh, get messed up. So this place is full of blood roses. Um, and then there's also the blood grease um, recipe in here. Oh wow, I thought you would have got caught up in that explosion then. So this is going to lead us all the way up the tower. And we're going to get the first part of the Dextus Medallion. The reason we're doing this is because when we go over to Kaelid um, to get the dragon, it's going to give us basically all of our souls here. That will also be right next to the second medallion piece. Now, depending on what equipment and weapon you have, um, this guy here... You can actually kill him for bloodlust, but he is pretty tricky. This is totally optional. So there's the blood ability coming out. There you go. Bloody slash. Okay, and you can see We've got quite a lot of the map opened up at this stage, but now we are going to go back to the Church of Ella once again. And from here, we're going to go towards uh, the Dragonburnt Ruins. And this is basically going to be our shortcut into Kaelid, just so we don't have to run and run and run for miles. So, here we go. Let's hope the dog doesn't kill us now, because these guys will follow us all the way in. We just need to open this door, and then open the chest, and we'll be taking it all the way over to Kaelid automatically. So, now we're in the Sadia Crystal Tunnel, and here you just want to go down. You can grab some of these smithing stone materials if you like. I like to just pop in that little shack there just to give me a bit of cover from the enemies before they start sniping me. Get another grace checkpoint. Okay, now we actually need to get out of here, but to do that we need to go to the west. But what I'm going to very quickly do is just head east. Uh, because this is going to net us um, a checkpoint here for later. And also a Rotten Spirit straight uh, Ash, which is going to be useful for us later. Okay, so yeah, again, we're not going to fight anything here, we're just going to keep going to the west. And uh, this is up to you, um, but my character's a mage, so I'm going to grab the Meteoric Staff, which is right by here. And that staff um, doesn't require any leveling up, and it has S-scaling automatically. So, a lot of 
tricky enemies in this area. So, gonna keep grabbing any graces that I come across. And then we are heading, I believe, up around here somewhere. <laughs> I would show you exactly where it is, but the way the map works is it tries to make it look smaller than it is until you've actually unlocked it. Okay, so we're just going to keep heading north from here. Grabbing any sights of grace. <clears throat> it's actually the tree I would say you want to look out for here. If you kind of head in line with where the tree is, you shouldn't go too far wrong. So as soon as you get to this grace checkpoint now, what you want to do is then head east. Um, and you'll know you're in the right place because there's this little jump over that you need to do. These guys may try and follow you, but they shouldn't be able to make it over. Yeah, so as soon as you're in Grey Rolls, Dragonborough, you know you're needy there. Got the Divine Tower there, where you could potentially get your plus 8 shard. But, as I said, we're not too worried about that. You just want to uh, avoid these dragons as best you can. And as soon as you see the great dragon lying down, then you've made it. So the dragon should be up on our left here as soon as we get to this, uh, this wall here. We're just going to follow this wall along because there is a dragon on the other side of it that we don't want to aggro. And then we're going to activate the grace site past the dragon. That way then, whatever happens, we're kind of safe. And this is also where we're going to be getting a very important talisman to start us off. And we'll also get the second part of the Dexter uh, lift medal. Okay, this area is very dark, so you just want to head towards the light, and then up the stairs. Hopefully you don't get poisoned. Just as I said it, it happened. Okay, here is the second half of the Dexter's medal. Or medallion and then you're gonna run past these holes heal if you've been poisoned like me and then try not to get lost in the dark but you want to head this way and then jump back on yourself I'm gonna grab that room 12 and then get killed by a rat <laughs> Right, attempt number two. So we need to make sure that this is broken here, so that the rat doesn't bite us again. And then we need to jump. There'll be another big rat, so watch that. And then uh, grab this, and then it really doesn't matter if you die. <laughs> Okay, so now we have both half of the medals. Um, we have our golden pickled foot as well. 
what you can do now is, and this is a lot easier with a bleed weapon, is you can literally poke <laughs> the dragon to death. As soon as you think the dragon is about to die, and I mean literally just about to die, then you pop your golden pickled foul foot. And that'll net you, I think it's about 70 to 80,000 souls. So you'll have enough um, between those souls, the items you've collected, um, to actually level all the way up. Say about 35, and then have enough souls to buy the first four of uh, the somber stones. And then basically, you're set. Um, now, I will show this quickly. Uh, this is the very last thing. Okay, so now we're back at the northern Lunaria Lake shoreline. Um, by this point, you have everything you need to, uh, as I said, pimp your character out, get the stats to the bare minimum of whatever weapon you require, um, and then from the, obviously you can get that weapon all the way to plus seven. Uh, now, as I mentioned, I wanted to give you the possibility of choosing from Kaelid, Limgrave, Lunaria, and Altus Plasto for your starting weapon. Um, so, from that checkpoint, now we're just going to ride basically northeast into this big valley. But we're not going to go all the way down the valley because that would lead us um, to some tricky enemies and a boss that we don't want to fight because we're not fighting any bosses doing this. So, we just need to head into this valley until we see this checkpoint here. And then, just after this checkpoint, we're going to see a pathway on the right. So, once again, I'm going to light this. I was really torn on my characters here for Griffith. Like, there was a few other options that seemed a bit better. Uh, like, because his hair is very curly. Yeah, but none of, none of the other haircuts had a straight fringe like uh, like Griffith has. So this is why we went for this one. So this is a, a fairly straightforward path. No real aggro. Just going to go up past here. There'll be a merchant here. And then we're basically going to turn back on ourselves. Here we go. So, Bellum Church. This is important um, in a certain character's quest line. We're also going to grab this. So, now we can just keep heading north, northeast. You can basically see anyway the grand uh, the lift there. Get confused between my lifts. Obviously, we got the Dexter's lift and then the grand lift of rolled. Okay, so we just want to jink past these enemies. They ain't gonna chase us too hard. again, we'll just grab the grace checkpoint. Might be useful later. And uh, now we just need to show the medal. Okay, so we're now, well, about 50 minutes in. Um, and we are now in Altus Plateau already. Like this grace point here. And uh, yeah, the last thing we'll do is we'll just open up the map here and get one more grace check, but then that way then you are fully established in this area and we can wrap it up. Again, a lot of the stuff I've done has been optional. 
Like, you don't obviously have to come all the way here, but it just gives you more options, basically, in terms of uh, building your character. You know, if you can choose any area, um, obviously, <laughs> the further you are, the riskier it becomes. To get, um, to get the weapons, obviously, if it's in, for example, in a cave or behind a boss, but it is all po uh, it's, it's all possible because um, I've done this with uh, a Dex character um, that uses Arcane. So I've done this, come all the way here, and then what I've done is I've gone back, I've done Yura's quest line, and then I've been able to come all the way through. Anyway, let's uh, let's quickly check where we are. So we are exactly 55 minutes in. Um, we now have all of this map unlocked and last of all if I just go into my flasks we've got another charge of that another charge of that so yeah 55 minutes in we've got access to a hell of a lot of souls we've got access to plus seven weapon um, we have seven flasks and those flasks are plus three we've got a decent spirit summon we've got our wondrous flask of physic and we've got a good chunk of the map open so you've got so many places to choose your starting weapon from anyway i hope this is useful guys a bit of a different video obviously a bit longer and a bit meandering but it just shows what's possible in under an hour on elden ring hope you've enjoyed this if you have like the video subscribe for more and i'll catch you in the next one Smoldering with thy knee.